Hey there! This is Dr. Abel Manalo of Manalo Canine and I would like to welcome you back to our page or our channel. I'm very happy that you're here because today we have a very special episode. We have a very special guest. His name is Mr. Jeff Shetler of the USA and he is the world's number one authority when it comes to canine tracking. If you've ever wondered why uh, dogs could find uh, missing children or missing people, maybe uh, You've heard of dogs uh, looking for criminals or terrorists in forests, jungles, or maybe in the desert or other places. Well, that's canine tracking. And our, our special guest is going to be talking about what he does, about himself, and also about the work that he does. And will be doing, maybe with us here in the Philippines too. So don't forget to subscribe and follow our pages and hit that bell button on YouTube because that would make us able to notify you when the next uh, videos will come because this will be a series of about three or four videos. It's a long interview via Skype and uh, we'll be releasing the other videos, the continuation videos after we do the first one. And if you're not subscribed or not following our page, you, will, you might lose out on those. Without further ado, Let's go to the video interview. Okay, hello everybody. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Abel Manalo, and I'm here with a very special guest all the way from the USA, Jeff Shetler. Hi, Jeff, how are you? Say hi to, the, to everybody. How's it going, Abel? Dr. Manalo, it's good to see you. Hello to everybody else out there in uh, Cyberland. Yeah. So, uh, Jeff. I met you 2012 at Tennessee at the Canaan Cup conference, yeah. and you were one of the instructors there. And I learned yeah. a lot from you, and what you taught was amazing. So, stuff that only you can teach. I've heard from other canine practitioners <laughs> that you know you're you're the top of the chain of uh, tracking canine experts all over the world so you're like uh, the guru to go to when it comes to tracking how did you get to this point this video could uh, we, we would like to hear about you know how you got to this point or did you start out wanting to be a canine expert or maybe a, a little bit about your background can you tell us about that sure um, well, my journey into canine started when I was a, a young boy, actually. You know, I've always been very into to dogs in general. Um, but I would say the biggest thing for me that, that happened uh, when I was a young, young teenager, uh, I was about 14, 15 years old, and I, was ha I had a very difficult family life. Uh, it wasn't um, normal. As a matter of fact, I, was, I ended up being homeless a couple years of teenage life. Um, I, I dropped out of high school. I you know, I had, as a matter of fact, I didn't make it past eighth grade, no education. And it was just because my family life, uh, not really very good at all. It was a difficult situation. And uh, going out and being on my own, um, I didn't really quite realize it, 14 years old, uh, but life on this is not easy. And that's actually why I wasn't able to go to school. Um, but my life with dogs really started then because I, I uh, took a, a little puppy a Chesapeake Bay Retreat from a homeless man who wasn't really taking care of her very well. Uh -huh. uh, and I ended up taking her with me. And everywhere I went, she went. If I couldn't bring her, I just didn't go. So she was the reason why I lived. She was the reason why I, I did everything. And initially, it was just kind of like a boy and a, his dog type story. But she was actually incredibly smart, very athletic. And I trained her to, act, to do quite a few things. I could train her to walk off lead with me everywhere I went, even on the freeway. I mean, she was so good, she'd stay right there. Um, and this was important because I had to hitchhike everywhere. You know, I didn't have a car. And if I needed a ride, I'd have to get a ride. And, you know, she was with me all the time. So she had to be very well behaved. But that that's kind of how my dog story began, right? And I knew then and it was like somebody spoke to me when I was very young, maybe 15 or 16. And it was very, very clear. I remember it to this day, that my future was this and that this is what I needed to do. And I remember it really, really clearly. I'll never forget it. And, and made the commitment then to work with the animals bulls and dogs, and, and that would be my life and my future. I joined the Army in, uh, when I was 18 years old, 
Uh, and the reason why I joined the army was because I had no education, I had no home, I had no uh, And if I continued to do things the way I did, mm -hmm. uh, I'd probably end up in jail. So I had to change. And uh, the army gave me that, that future. And of course, I, I ended up taking my dog with me wherever this, where I was stationed. Um, when I got out of the army, I became a police officer. And that's when my professional canine life began. Um, I got my first dog, which was a tracking dog, uh, working for the state uh, of California, uh, the city of Alameda. Um, and I was in a unique position because uh, I had the first full-time police bloodhound uh, tracking dog only tracking for the state of California. This had never happened before. Um, my dog became very, very effective very quickly. We found Found a lot of missing people, a lot of criminals, solved a lot of cases. And in a pretty short period of time, um, it got the attention of many other police departments and also the FBI. Uh, I was attached to the FBI's hostage rescue for um, 1997 until 2001. Uh, so, and our job was abducted and missing children. Uh, and then also hunting serial killers. So serial killers and children at risk. This was the job. Um, and then when I got out of the police work, you know, when I retired from law enforcement, I don't know how to do anything else because I made this commitment to dogs. Mm -hmm. and, and now it's what I do for my business. You know, uh, I started Georgia Canine National Training Center in 2008 uh, and with the mission to train uh, not only tracking dogs, uh, but drug detection, explosives detection, uh, obedience for people with obe uh, civilian dogs, much like your own company, you know, very multifaceted. And uh, that's my story in a nutshell. Yeah, and I think uh, only the military has some tracking dogs. Uh, Buck Dykes uh, taught us how to, do, how to train dogs in tracking way back in 2009, but we didn't have any use mm -hmm. for them. And nobody would uh, ask for them anyway. So, what do you think? Uh, what do you think we should do? I mean, with the current situation, and nobody's giving any importance to tracking dogs here. Has it been? Uh, has it been the same um, situation in the U.S. before, or has it always been that the, the Americans gave a lot of importance to tracking dogs? Tracking in our country has been going on since the 1600s. So the first, uh -huh. the first tracking dogs in the United States came from England, and they were imported into the country to help the early colonists uh, track down women and children who were abducted by the Indian tribes. So in the early days in our country, during the 1600s, we had very small colonies on the East Coast. And um, due to disease that was brought by the Europeans, uh, and also warfare, many of the American Indian tribes were decimated by disease and warfare. And so their populations plummeted. Uh, and one of the common trends for the Indian tribes, not just on the East Coast, but all throughout the Americas, is um, they would take children and women from other tribes and other places to build their, this is a very, very common tactic. Um, so if their numbers dropped, if their numbers went low, they would go steal women and children from other places to build their tribe. This is what they did. And so in the, in the early days, the American colonists uh, um, needed a way to find these people. And so they used bloodhounds to track the, the women and the children. And then also, of course, the Indians, too. Um, this was the beginning in the Americas, and it's been a a tradition ever since. But even though it is a tradition, there are um, many places, many communities that don't know anything about tracking dogs. And oh. so much of what you're much of what you're experiencing there happens here too in our country in different places. Um, really what it takes is to look at what the dog's capabilities are and then understand what the application can be. And I think that's what's not happened in the Philippines. Um, 
nobody has looked at it from aspect of how effective this really could be. Mm -hmm. And see, this is the thing, uh, Dr. Manalo, is that the Philippines is one of the best environments in the world to track in. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's amazing. You know, you're a, it's a jungle environment. Yeah. Very yeah. humid. Very, very warm. Um, lots of green. Lots of plants. Lots of you know vegetation. Uh, even in the cities. Mm -hmm. And you you have you have a tracking rich environment. The dogs could do very very well there. Um, and see here, the application. This is what the dogs can be good for. Missing children. You mm -hmm. know, Alzheimer's patients. You know, mm -hmm. old people that disappear and walk off. Um, the law enforcement aspect, tracking down criminals, you know, that run from one place to another. And the military aspect is anti-terrorism. You know, one of the biggest problems that I've seen in, in, in the Philippines is that oftentimes in the, uh, the terrorists will just disappear into the jungle and uh, the mountains, and it can be very, very difficult to discover them to find them. Mm -hmm. um, the dogs, on the other hand, could make that very, very successful and relatively easy. So how easier would it be if you had the tracking dog than uh, if only humans would be looking for a mis missing person in the jungle? Mm -hmm. Well, the dog, the dog will get you there a lot faster. The human will never probably find that person. You know? How fast? How fast all right. Uh, what's the probability well, uh, of... Uh, to give you an person. example, yeah. Go in, ahead. in the jungle with a very good dog, in the jungle with a very good dog, um, it would be very difficult for the terrorists to get away. Very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. We would probably catch them. Uh, um, the problem is, is catching them safely. You need to, uh, when, you're, when you're hunting armed suspects, um, you, you have to be very, very careful because if you get too close too quickly, there could be a firefight and you could lose people. So what we teach and what my school is, is teaching tactics and learning how to read the dog that you're getting close. The dog will always tell you when you're getting close. And uh -huh. if you can read this, you can, act, you can actually surprise the people that you're hunting, surround them and take them out without them ever knowing that you have what the dog gives you that option that you can't have with just humans. So that concludes part one of our series with Mr. Jeff Shetler. Uh, please follow or subscribe to our page so that you won't miss out on the next episodes. This is Dr. Abel Manalo of Manalo K9 saying thank you very much for watching and mabuhay po kayong.